Presented by Geico, is at the American Legion World Series in Shelby, North Carolina, where the first semifinal today will be the team from Henderson, Nevada, against a team from Bryant, Arkansas. We're a little late getting started today because of torrential rains last night. There's been a helicopter here drying out the outfield, and the good news is the sun is out, and we are ready to play baseball. So let's head now down to the field. President of Ambassador Baptist College in Lattimore and Mayor of the town Lattimore will sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. this afternoon. Well, we are four teams left. Nevada, Arkansas, and North Carolina, Nebraska. The winners will play for the championship tomorrow night. All the games are right here on ESPNU. Very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mike Hockwood, along with former Major League pitcher Steve Woodard. And Steve, it is really an honor just for these teams to get this far and to have this chance. It is. We're down to four teams, Mike. And you know what? It's a do or die. So these teams are going to leave it all out there on the field. Yeah, it is really do or die. And you got to give everything. And this Nevada team has got to find their bats. Well, you know, they come in, hit 405 as a team, and they've struggled the first three games here, scoring three runs in three games. And uh, Coach Baker this morning said he's hoping they can turn it around. Now this team from Bryan, Arkansas. These young men have been playing together since they were in Little League. And this is their last hurrah, so to speak, and they want to make it a good one. They do. And, you know, they first game they lost the first game, and they've come back the last two and played very, very good together, and they're hoping they can pull this out today. And pitching today for Arkansas will be a right-hander, Myers Buck. At Myers Buck. Myers is going to throw a fastball, a curveball, and he'll throw an occasional changeup. And, Mike, he'll get it up there somewhere between 80 to 85 miles an hour. And hopefully he's, you know, in the regional there, he walked some, walked some guys, got in some trouble, and he's hoping he can turn that around. And here's the lineup that he'll be facing from this team from Henderson, Nevada. John Howard Bobo will lead it off, and it's Roger Riley, Ryan Nelson, Jack Thompson Wold, Jesse Fontaboa, Garrett Giles, J.J. Smith, David Huddleston, and Nick Thompson. Nobody has really torn the cover off the ball for Nevada. It's Steve was telling you, three runs in three games. They actually had a losing record, one and two, in play before qualifying here. But the series of tiebreakers, the run differential statistic, they were able to survive and make it to the semifinals. And you get here, the big thing is you've got to forget about what's happened before. Oh, today's a new day, and they're hoping they can turn it around and score some runs here early. 
John Howard Bobo, youngster, very mature player, will lead it off. The uh, right fielder plays well uh, beyond his young age. He's just a rising sophomore in high school. And John Howard Bobo has had uh, two hits in this series. This Nebraska team lost to Nebraska in the first game, and they beat uh, the team from Massachusetts 1-0. They lost to Michigan 1-0 yesterday. Fly ball to a wet outfield. Logan Allen is there for the first out of the game. Take a look at the defense for Arkansas. Kobe Greiner, Logan Allen, Logan Allen, and Alex Shirtliff. That's a good outfield. Scott Schmitz made some great plays at third base in this World Series. Jakey, Seth Tucker, Aaron Orender. Dylan Hurt is the son of the coach, Darren Hurt. He is a veteran. He has played a year of college baseball, catching Myers Buck. Roger Riley, the Nevada catcher, is the batter. All of these players are from basic high school. You know, and you got to love how he's came out. Myers Buck has came out. You know, he's he's being aggressive. He has fallen behind here on this hitter, but he's he's working fast. Base hit for Roger Riley, and that is just his second base hit of this World Series. He was one for nine before that hit. And you saw how slow that ball was rolling in the outfield. Watch this. Yeah, and that's what we're going to have to pay attention to with the outfielders, and the runners are going to have to pay attention to that. The ball's looking like it just stopped. The good news for Nevada, they get a hit here in their first inning. They have been hard to come by all week for this team. Ryan Nelson, the designated hitter, is the batter. Tall guy, 6'4", 185. He had a freshman season at Oregon last year, and so he will be a sophomore in college. And base hit number two. Couple hits in a row off of Myers Buck. It looks like they came out swinging the bats today, don't it? Indeed, Buck did not pitch a lot in the regionals last week. Only pitched five innings. Wow, four hits, four runs. And I have the big stat. He walked seven and only struck out three. And you know they're hoping he can turn that around here today. Jack Thomas Wold, the batter, and a big opportunity with one out for the team from Henderson, Nevada. And how about his numbers, Mike? They look like Nintendo numbers, don't they? 21 home runs with 114 RBIs on the year. Hit 508 over the course of the summer. Here he uh, was two for four in the loss to Nebraska. 0 for two in the loss to Massachusetts and or the win over Massachusetts. Two for three in the loss to Michigan. So he's got four hits here. He's hit well. And I know Coach Baker this morning was talking about uh, talking about him and saying that he's one of the few guys they've had on this team that's not actually changed his approach once he's got here to the World Series. He is four for nine, so he's hitting over 500 this week. Another shot to left field, but this one is right at Kobe Bryant. Should say he's hitting just under 500. Look at the uh, water that Griner is running through. It is still wet out there despite the helicopter that they brought in. Wonder if he brought some extra socks to put on in between innings. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Jesse Fonaboa, the third baseman, is the batter. And takes strike one. Two hits in the inning for Nevada, but there are now two out. This team coached by Scott Baker, who had some professional baseball experience. On the nose to center field, and Logan Allen makes the play. 
Nevada strands two here in the top of the first. We're underway with the semifinals of the American Legion World Series in Shelby, North Carolina. Back in Shelby, North Carolina, and we move to the bottom of the second. Christian Sanford, right-hander, will be the starting pitcher for the team from Henderson. And you can look right there, he's 6'2", 190, a great pitcher's body. Uh, he throws a fastball, a slider, occasional change, and he's going to be somewhere in the 80 to 85 mile an hour range, too, and he's going to attend this year at Regis University in Denver, Colorado. We take a look at the lineup from Arkansas. Logan Allen will lead it off. It is Jake East, Seth Tucker, Dylan Hurt, Alex Shirtlip, Jake Wright has a big home run in this series. Aaron Orender, Scott Schmidt, and Kobe Griner. Logan Allen has a hit in every game in this World Series. There's the Nevada defense. Smith Thompson, John Howard Bobo in the outfield. Fauna Boa, Garrett Giles, David Huddleston, and Jack Thomas Wold. Roger Riley behind the plate catching Christian Sanford. Like we said, Mike, this, uh, this Arkansas team, the uniforms they have on today, these camo uniforms, we knew they'd have them on today again. I don't, know, I don't know if we've explained that yet. It was three home runs against Nevada, and they came back, and the next game decided or against New Jersey, rather, and can, then against North Carolina, which they won 5 nothing last night. They had these camo uniforms on. Normally, the teams only wear them one time in the uh, American Legion World Series, but when you hadn't hit a home run, they had not hit a home run all summer long until that game against New Jersey where they hit three of them. <laughs> the team said, I believe we'll wear the camo uniforms again. I'd be wearing them too. Count two balls, two strikes to Logan Allen, the center fielder. Good play there by David Huddleston. We talked about the game against New Jersey, and it was Logan Allen who hit one. Seth Tucker hit one. And also Jacob Wright hit a home run. That's amazing. When you, this is a team that was lived and died by small ball, and they came here and knocked three home runs first time all year. 51 games without hitting a home run, and then come here and hit three. Jake East is the batter, the shortstop. by the third baseman. Nice play by Jesse Fonaboa, the Nevada third baseman. And we've seen some great defensive plays by third basemen in this tournament. That was another one right there. We've seen defensive plays all over the place. Great catches in center field. A lot of good athletes here in Shelby this week. Seth Tucker is the batter. Right up the middle, that's going to get through for a base hit. First base runner for Arkansas. Tucker aboard, two out. You know, at Sanford, I mean, he's, he's trying to just get ahead right here. And just a good piece of hitting, hitting right back up the middle, staying within himself. If there's been an MVP for the Arkansas team, it is Dylan Hurt. He had a big night last night in the win over previously unbeaten North Carolina, a game they won 5 nothing. In that game, Hurt was two for three, and he had uh, one instance where he was on first in an error. He went all the way to third, ended up scoring a big run. 
He was the starting catcher last year at Arkansas Fort Smith. And he calls all the pitches himself. Just a very good all around player and he, he don't run like a catcher either. He's got some speed. And Sanford falls behind here three and oh. Started his <laughs> trot down to first base, but our home plate umpire, Mark Mayo, said, Hold on. He was open to make the call for him there. Turned on it. And running through that wet grass, J.J. Smith makes the play for the third out of the inning. Arkansas strands a runner. We played an inning here in Shelby. Nevada, nothing. Arkansas, nothing. The American Legion World Series is part of the summer of next is brought to you by the American Legion. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles. And Mike, I mean, J.J. Smith, this whole entire tournament has been making plays, running everywhere to get these balls. Right there, you can see though how wet it is out there to slow him down. It is wet. Not only do you have to worry about chasing down the ball, you have to worry about slipping and falling down out there. Garrett Giles is the batter. Leading off the second inning here, Giles the shortstop for Nevada. Rising senior in high school. He is looking for his first hit here in Shelby in the World Series. This is a guy who hit 416 over the summer. They 0 for 3 against Nebraska, 0 for 2 against Massachusetts, and 0 for 1 against Michigan. Yeah, and these other guys have started out, you know, two base hits in the first inning. Let's see if he can get it going also. Big guy for a shortstop, 6'3, 175. Oh, and that's not what you want to do if you're Myers Buck walk the leadoff hitter, particularly a guy with as much speed as Garrett Giles. That is our first walk of the game. Here's the left fielder, J.J. Smith, who you were just talking about. Trying to bunt the ball and uh, get the runner over, but it rolls foul. And he has some speed. That's, you know, just trying to trying to lay one down, catch third baseman off guard. and. Just didn't get it down fair. J.J. Smith, one of those guys with some power. He hit 11 home runs over the summer. Graduated a couple years ago, 2016. But he only has one hit here. That has been the issue. We've talked about it, but he, we can't emphasize it enough. This is a team that tore the cover off the ball through the regionals, and here they've only managed to score three runs in three games and you're wondering if coach Baker don't want to try to maybe get some you know guy in motion try to try to create something here ball and a strike to Smith gets the bunt down it's a good one does his job sacrifices Giles down to second base very good job getting this bunt down and uh Getting a guy in scoring position. Go for the second consecutive inning. Nevada's got a runner in scoring position. And the batter will be the second baseman, David Huddleston. Huddleston's got a hit in each of the last two games. Hit 387 over the course of the summer season and you got to wonder Mike uh, Arkansas has already got somebody warming up in the bullpen just wondering with him getting behind on a couple of these hitters uh, you know if he's going you know you got to play to win well, I was going to say this is you're not saving any pitching today we've had uh, throughout the week there's a lot of uh, 
different rules about how often you can come back on the pitch count. But today it doesn't matter. It's win or go home. So you uh, you do everything you can just to win the game. As pull, he pulled everything out of the hat. Today. And Buck has struggled with his control here in these first two innings. He's behind 2-0. and He's already walked a batter in this inning. We told you in the regionals last week, he walked seven and struck out three. So he's probably on a very short lease here. No score. Giles down at second base for Nevada. Round ball to second. That's going to get the runner to third. And they're two out. A lot of things can happen when you get a runner at third base. Now you're looking at that pass ball, wild pitch, you know, anything can happen, like you said. Nick Thompson, the center fielder. To the shortstop, he's, boy, he's got an arm. And Nevada strands a runner. Myers Buck gets out of it. We go to the bottom of the second. Still no score. Nevada and Arkansas in the American Legion World Series. Tonight we'll have the first game of the four-game home-and-home Subway Series. It's the Mets and the Yankees from Yankee Stadium. 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and also streaming live on the ESPN app. And right now we've got American Legion World Series baseball semifinals. A lot of youngsters today. School in this area doesn't start for another week or two. The folks here in Cleveland County, Shelby, North Carolina, have done a great job all week hosting this tournament. This is one of the highlights of the year in this area. And we've had great crowds expecting another standing room only crowd tonight for Nebraska and North Carolina. Alex Shirtliff is the batter, the right fielder. Mike, we do have to give a, you know, a big applause to the grounds crew for getting this field ready today. It was wet. Well, they were out here early this morning trying to get the water off the outfield. The infield had a tarp on it last night, but, I mean, it really, really rained buckets. I think they said they got out here around 7 o'clock this morning starting trying to get this field ready to play on. Count even, two balls, two strikes, two shirtliff. Alex Shirtliff pitched that win for Arkansas over uh, New Jersey, seven to four. To center field, a couple steps back, and Nick Thompson has it. And Sanford's came out here. You know, he's throwing strikes, getting ahead of guys, and, uh, you know, throwing two pitches for strikes and keeping them off balance. We're talking about this Arkansas team in this event. They lost to Idaho 4 0 in the first game. But they have been a different looking team in the last two games. Jake Wright is the batter. They've been doing all the little things, you know. In yesterday's game, they left guys in scoring position early in the game, but later in the game, they got those guys in. They all go to or graduated from Bryant High School. They've been playing together since they were Little League age. They won a state high school championship in 2016 and won the 13-year-old Babe Ruth World Series and thought, we'll give it one more shot while we uh, still have a chance to have the gang all together. Jake Wright did not chase the 0-2, a ball and two strikes. You know, and it's got to be, you know, it's fun for these guys that have played together their whole lives. They're like family and, you know, trying to do it just one more time. We're talking about those home runs against New Jersey. And again, they hadn't had a home run all year. Jake Wright at the plate hit one of those home runs. But here, goes down on strikes. That's the first strikeout for Christian Sanford. 
and just a good slider down and away. Had him off balance. And he was out in front of it. On American Legion team, there are 18 players, so you do double duty. Aaron Oinder at the plate. He's also a good pitcher. That's right at Thompson in an easy inning for Christian Sanford. One, two, three. He sets down Arkansas. Still no score through two here in the semifinals of the American Legion World Series. Welcome back to the American Legion World Series in Shelby, North Carolina. They divided these eight teams into two divisions, the Stars and the Stripes. Nebraska ripped through the stripes with a 3-0 record. First batter of the game, John, or the inning, John Howard Bobo lines to left. Nebraska goes 3-0 in the three games to get to the semifinals. The other three teams in their division were 1-2. and two. That's the reason Nevada, through uh, the tiebreaker rules, able to get here. Lost to Nebraska 9-1. As we said, they beat Massachusetts 1-0, lost to Michigan 1-0. One, One run in each of the three games. Roger Riley had a base hit his first time up, the Nevada catcher. And he had 83 hits on the year. That's a lot of hits. And before that hit, though, he was one for nine here in the World Series. Maybe he brought his... Matt back to life here in the semifinals. Well, let's see if he can keep it going right here. He's, uh, you know, in a good hitter's count, 2-1. Myers Buck has struggled a little with his control so far as we head to inning number three. And maybe Riley changed it around. He's got a mustache. Maybe he uh, grew that for, for today. Well, if he grew that in a day, that's pretty good. <laughs> That's hit to left field, and that is caught at the wall. No, he dropped it. Had it in his glove, and he dropped it. Kobe Griner, who just took over that left field job a couple of weeks ago. And Mike, you got to wonder if you know the field being wet, if it had anything to do with him getting to that ball. But what a great piece of hitting! He, he smoked that ball, and almost a great catch. There, he had it in his glove, and it came out. So again, a runner in scoring position for the third straight inning for Nevada. Ryan Nelson, the DH, is the batter. Myers Buck is playing with fire. When you when you fall behind and you know 1-0, 2-0, you are playing with fire. And this looks like a different hitting Nevada team, right up the middle. Goes Nelson. Riley, not great speed, will be held at third base, and the runners now at the corners in one out. And there's another thing, Mike, you got to look at. This ball's hit to the outfield. As the ball gets there, I bet you that ball's, ball's very wet when he gets in his hands. I'm surprised that uh, Myers Buck isn't asking for a new baseball. And another visit to the mound. From Darren Hurt, and again there is activity down in the Arkansas bullpen. As Myers Buck has now given up four hits and has struggled a bit with his control. Yeah, and you got to wonder how long he's going to end up going here. You know, he was already warm here, it looked like in the earlier inning down the bullpen. And we'll see how much longer he'll go. Bo Von Villian, who uh, got up a moment ago, is back loosening, so it won't take him long to get ready. He's already been up. Well, he's got the mustache as he well. Did, that must be a thing now with We're this <laughs> Arkansas team. One out. Roger Riley at third. Ryan Nelson at first. Nevada threatening again, and the batter is Jack Thomas Wold. We told you this guy hit 21 home runs through the summer. He's got incredible power, hit over 500. Flew out to left field his first time up here.
and he's fell behind 2-0 again. And, you know, with a hitter like this, you sure don't want to do that. We might add that the numbers that you saw on the screen are for what they have done here in Shelby in the World Series. Almost caught him. We've seen a couple of runners picked off at third base in this World Series. You got to wonder if the runner on first isn't going to be in motion to try to make something happen. He wanted that right field wall right there. Big cut by Jack Thomas Wold. And he's going to UNLV running Rebels. Runner was going with the pitch. Run will score. That's what he's been doing all year. Base hit, RBI, Jack Thomas rolled, and Nevada takes the lead 1 nothing. And they had that runner going in motion right there and opened up that hole, and, you know, they were able to play some, you know, first to third. Now they got another runner in scoring position. And that is going to do it for Myers Buck as Ryan Nelson is down at third base. Jack Thomas rolled at first. There's still just one out. And Nevada has drawn first blood here, leading 1 0. Well, we'll tell you about the new Arkansas pitcher in a moment. Nevada threatening, and they lead it 1 0. There's the new Arkansas pitcher, Bo Bonvillian, who graduated last spring from Bryan High School. And he's a lefty. Yeah, and he's going to throw a fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. And, you know, he's a lefty, but he can bring it anywhere from 80 to 85 miles an hour. You saw his numbers here in Shelby. The batter is Jesse Fontaboa, the third baseman. He flew out to center field his first time up. Yeah, and right here, Mike, he, you know, if he can get a ground ball, he can get out of this inning right here. But, uh, you know, the main thing, come in, throw strikes. He's throwing strikes, nothing in two, the count to Fonaboa. Yeah, and he's, he's jumped ahead here, and you wonder what he's going to do here, if he's going to try to waste one or, or go right after him. Fonaboa is got power. We talked about it in his first at bat, 15 home runs. And there two we, hits here in Shelby. And there we just saw that good curveball he threw, and I uh, think he left it over the plate a little bit more than he wanted to. Fonaboa was way out in front of it. Ball gets by the catcher. Run will score. Nelson scores, and I believe they'll score that a wild pitch. Yeah, it looked like uh, Dylan Hurd. He looked like he had to reach for this ball. It looked like it was all the way across the plate, opposite of where he was sitting at. And, uh, yep, came back inside where he Wait. couldn't reach it. He set up outside, and... Ball is way inside. Ground ball to the shortstop, and it eats up Jake East. Boy, you haven't seen many plays like that from Jake East in this World Series. No, and that right there, you know, just uh, looked like he sat back on it and took a bad hop right there at the last second. That'll move Jack Thomas Wolf to second base. The runners at first and second. Still only one out. Three hits in the inning. Two runs across. Garrett Giles, the shortstop's the batter. He walked his first time up, reached third base, not able to score. Well, Nevada has scored more runs in this inning. Than any one game they've played so far. They scored one in each of their three games. They've got two here. Popped up. There's a lot of room in foul territory here. And the first baseman, Aaron Orender, makes the play for out number two. And Bob Villa, he's came in and, you know, he's throwing strikes and doing exactly what he's supposed to.
J.J. Smith, the left fielder, will be the batter. Laid down a nice sacrifice bunt in his first at bat. Mike, he's been a joy to watch in this tournament. I mean, just making plays and running all over the field, making great throws. Ball in the strike to count to J.J. Smith. He's another guy that's got power, double-digit home runs through the summer season. Turns on that one. Griner's going back. He's at the wall, and he makes the catch. Third out of the inning, but two runs across the plate on three hits. There were two stranded. 2 nothing. our score. Nevada leads Arkansas. It is ESPNU Summer of Next, where we see the stars of tomorrow. Love the high school football coverage coming up. A lot of teams like St. John Bosco and St. Thomas Aquinas. East and West Coast, DeMatha from Maryland, Bishop Gorman from Nevada play. There are a lot of uh, neat games, and you will see the stars of tomorrow on the Summer of Next. Scott Schmidt will lead it off for Arkansas here in the bottom of the third inning. And I think, Mike, here, the, the tail right here is Sanford's came out five of eight hitters he's faced. He's thrown first pitch strikes to. He's only faced one over the minimum, and that was a base hit by Seth Tucker. Hi, Hopper. And the play made by the shortstop, Garrett Giles. He's now set down five in a row. And when you throw that first pitch strike, you can do a lot of other things with your other pitches also. Now a youngster, Kobe Griner, the number nine hitter in the order, the left fielder. Backhanded by Giles, long throw. And a nice scoop at first base by Jack thompson Wold. Man, he can pick it. Great play here by the shortstop in the hole and having to get rid of the ball real quick. And when you got a first baseman like that, can pick it up off the ground. A lot of value to a team to have a great defensive first baseman. Logan Allen. Nobody able to catch up to it. Logan Allen slides into second with a double. Boy, it would be big if Arkansas would be able to answer here in the bottom of the third inning and Allen with a two-out double. They might got to wonder right here if you know, that ground wouldn't wet. You know, we've seen them get those balls all week. It's got to affect your running just a little bit, as wet as it is out there. Jake East, the batter. You know, and I wonder if it don't affect these guys. It's their first steps, I think, is the biggest thing they got to think about when they're taking off to go. You talk to Darren Hurt. He says, Allen, you see they're standing in second base. He's the guy that makes this team go. Going to a D2 school, Arkansas Fort Smith. J.J. Smith in left field. I guarantee you his socks are soaked. <laughs> and we haven't seen this much. Christian Sanford has fallen behind now, 3-0. and He's not walked anybody. Well, right here's not a bad spot to walk him. He got first open. You really just don't want to give in to him and give him a good pitch to hit. The throw a little offline. And some smart base running by Jake East. He's in at second base. Arkansas is on the board. It's two to one. And that was some great base running by Jake East. He saw that ball going over the head of the cutoff man and 
took second. Well, Allen scores, and I, I repeat what I said a moment ago. I think, Woody, this is huge. Arkansas coming back here in the bottom of the third and answering with a run. Big, and you, you know your job as a pitcher, when your team scores some runs, you want to come out, put a zero on the board. And, but Arkansas, man, they come out and they they put a run up here. We talked about it. These kids have played together since they were little league age. They don't give up. They've got a lot of fight in them. Seth Tucker's at the plate. Trying to bunt his way on, he surprised everybody. And he's safe at first. Tucker's got good speed. And that was a bunt to get a hit. And it kind of looked like a sand wedge in the green. It just stopped right there and spun back, but he was able to beat it out. And now Arkansas has a runner at third base of Jake East. Runners at the corners, two outs. Dylan Hurt. Oh my goodness. How many times have we seen a play like that, Woody? And with a runner in scoring position, getting picked off third base. Picked off third base, it has happened somehow all week. A really smart play in East, picked off at third, but it's two to one. Tonight at 7 Eastern, ESPN2 kicks off the second annual Fantasy Football Marathon with 28 straight hours of coverage. Matthew Berry and Adam Schefter will once again be on air for every second along with special guests as they bring you the most comprehensive fantasy insight to prepare you for your upcoming season. And of course, our coverage will also be on ESPN and the ESPN app. Two to one as we head to the fourth inning. Jake East picked off of third base, and we have seen that more times than I. You know, and you gotta, he's in scoring position. Where are you going to go? There's nowhere to go. Stay close to the back. First at bat for, or second at bat for David Huddleston. Uh, he saw Jake East do it. He was trying to butt his way on. Grounded out to second base his first time up. Huddleston with two hits in this World Series. You saw that two for eight. Two runs, more than they've scored in any game here in Shelby in this World Series. Bo Bonvillian on in relief of Myers Buck for Arkansas. The lefty falls behind three and one. Yeah, there was another. That was a great curveball, but uh, you know his fastball is 80 to 85. You're looking here on the screen with the gun. You know he's up to 83, 84. Let's challenge this guy. The center field and a nice run by Logan Allen. He got a late jump on that. Probably had to run a little faster than he thought. Yeah, and I, you know what I was saying earlier. I'm wondering if these guys, when they're first taking off, if they're trying to be careful because it's so wet. Great point. Allen is a really speedy center fielder. Has made some outstanding plays this week. Nick Thompson, center fielder, number nine in the order is the batter. He grounded out to shortstop his first time up. He's a rising senior in high school. He hit 300 through the regular summer season and then the state tournament and regionals. Falling behind here, a ball and two strikes. And you got a lot of bow. Bow is getting ahead of these guys. And it looks like the ball's jumping out of his hand. Strike three, first strikeout for Bo Von Villian. Very, very good pitch, fastball. Middle away here and right on the corner. And we'll move to the top of the order and John Howard Bobo. Bobo's 0 for 2. He flew out to center field, flew out to left.
And can you imagine, Mike, you know, Bobo, they've said he's already got several offers, you know, coming in already as a sophomore in high school to go to college. And he'll be a sophomore in basic this year. And he's got a base hit to right field. Youngest player in this game. And he's got a hit. Just a very, very good approach there. Just kind of stuck his bat out. Hit it where it was pitched. Two outs and the leadoff hitter aboard for Roger Riley. Riley doubled and scored in the third inning. He is two for two today. And you can see with both of these teams, they're not afraid to bunt. They're all showing. Riley's headed to junior college as soon as this event is over. Matter of fact, all those guys heading to college, most of them start this week. You'll be starting this week, correct? Absolutely. Now uh, teaching at Catawba College in Salisbury, North Carolina. Kind of fun working with all these young people. Ball and a strike to count to Riley. Singled in the first, doubled in the third, scored a run. You know, and he tried to bunk right there, pulled it back, and now with two strikes, he'll be swinging. Mike, these guys from Nevada, they, they swing hard, don't they? Well, you can see why they had such a great year hitting the baseball. And you know, it's hard to explain what happened to their bats in the first three games here in Shelby. And I think the coaches, all the coaches had no clue either what happened. I'm sure you just tell the guys, stay after it, stay doing what you've been doing all year. Two balls, two strikes to count to Riley. You know, and one thing about these coaches, they do know what they're doing. And uh, three of these coaches on this team play professional baseball with Essex Burton and Roberto Persona, as well as the head coach, Scott Baker. So they, did, they didn't make it as far as my partner, Steve Woodard, who <laughs> spent a lot of time with the Brewers. Also pitched with the A's and the Cardinals and the Red Sox. And now teaches young men how to play the game. Ground ball fielded cleanly by Seth Tucker. Nevada strands a runner. We go to the bottom of the fourth and stake a spot in the championship game tomorrow night. Nevada leads it by a run. I realize. ESPNU presents the summer of next. Brought to you by Geico. We're at the American Legion World Series in Shelby, North Carolina. Mike Hogwood along with former Major League pitcher Steve Woodard. <laughs> Good to have you with us today. Weren't sure we were going to get this game in. It was supposed to start at 3 o'clock. The outfield was simply too wet. They brought a helicopter in to dry it out, but it's still wet. But it's playable. And we're playing baseball. Dylan Hurd will lead it off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, you saw, did you see the water splash up? Right as uh, he, Nick Thompson. <laughs> right as he took off to go, water's going everywhere. You see why they're a little uh, ginger on that first step. They, they're a little careful. Alex Shirtliff, the batter. Takes strike one. Look at the outfield and watch. You saw his feet. Did you know, look at that water. Oh, wow. Center field is still really wet. <laughs> And we hear there's rain in the area, so uh, we're going to have you stand up and do your rain dance, if you would. That would help us a little bit. We need it to miss us. I can do that. Okay, good. 
Ball in the strike to count to Shirtlift, the right fielder. Shirtlift is two for six, or two for eight, rather. He was two for four in the game against Idaho, 0 for three against North Carolina, and 0 for one here today. He did not play in the field in the game against New Jersey because he pitched. That's upstairs, ball four. That is the first walk issued today for Christian Sanford. He's had really good control. He has, and actually the pitch, it was 2-1. It was a borderline pitch, uh, you know, could have went either way. See his pitch count, he's at 43. You know, we had a lot of rules about how much time you have off between pitches. Well, it doesn't matter today. You got to win. You got to win. Or there is no tomorrow. Jake Wright, the batter. In foul territory, that's going to get out of play. Yeah, those pitch counts don't matter too much today. You know, you, you're out there. Keep your team in the game. Go as long as you can. What the stat that's going to matter now is, is we're going to find out who's eligible to come back. Shirtliff on at first, one out. And the big thing for these teams, whoever pitched on that very first day of that tournament is eligible if they threw over that limit to be able to come back tomorrow. That is hit to center field, and Thompson is there for the easy play. His second catch of the inning, and that would be Aaron Orinder, who threw 93 pitches in that loss to Idaho. If Arkansas should make it, he would be eligible to pitch tomorrow night. He'd be ready to go, but got to win today. Absolutely. And speaking of Aaron Orinder, he's at the plate right now. He's playing first base when he's not pitching. To right field. Well, one walk, all is only issued by Christian Sanford. Nothing doing for Arkansas. We played four, two to one. Nevada leads. The American Legion World Series as part of the summer of next is brought to you by Gardner Webb University, a great school about 10 miles up the road here in Shelby, plays in the Big South Conference. And they're looking forward to a good football season, Kelly. And they were very generous. I think a lot of these teams went over there and actually practiced over the last Absolutely. few days. Absolutely. Rusty Straps got a good baseball program there at Gardner Webb. Ryan Nelson, the DH, will lead it off here in the fifth inning. like it hit him now we might mention that uh, they have shortened the games because of the weather issues we've had we're only going to play seven innings today normally a legion game is uh, the traditional nine innings but we're just playing seven yeah so it changes the pitching a little bit but i mean like we've said all along got to win today got to win to go to tomorrow you know and i think sanford might be done there is some serious activity down in the Nevada bullpen not warming up like he's going to keep just to uh, stay loose. And you don't usually warm up when your team's at the plate unless you're coming in. Yeah, so somebody's getting hot down there to come in. And it's actually Nick Thompson, the center fielder, who's loosening up. Sometimes you do that too, you play in the field. You have to warm up in between innings. Yeah, you do <laughs> to get there. I mean, if you haven't uh, thrown very many balls in the outfield, you got to do something to get loose quick. Count goes full to Ryan Nelson. Thompson's the number nine hitter, so he's not due up for a while.
you got to believe he's going to go right after him right here with that fastball, trying to make him put it in place somewhere. Well, another leadoff walk. This one issued by Bo Bavillion. It's been a problem for Arkansas pitching today. And I was wrong. You know, he threw a breaking ball right there or, or a slow change up and ended up walking him. Well, it's trouble when there are runners on base and you've got Jack Thomas Wold coming to the plate, the cleanup hitter. As we've documented, has on a, a lot of power. Really unbelievable. 21 home runs. And you see he's not done too bad here in uh, Shelby at the World Series. That's it to left field. Griner on the run. He makes the play. He was tiptoeing through that water. He was. But he got there and made the out. He got there and made a great catch. And, you know, like going back to the walk, uh, you know, in front of guys like Jack Thomas Wold and Jesse Fonaboa, you do not want to walk guys. You don't want guys on base when those guys come up. And Jesse Fonaboa is at the plate. Reached on an error in his last at bat. He's also flown out to center field. One out. He's got an opportunity here. And he's a good ball player too. He'd be a senior this year coming up and already has several D1 offers. Had a hit in the first two games of the World Series. Did not have a hit yesterday in the loss to Michigan. They were playing back at third base. Scott Schmidt was way back and Fonaboa was showing bunt there. Ball and two strikes. This is the 91st year of the American Legion World Series. 1926 Philadelphia, they got it started. Down towards that Nevada bullpen. And these Nevada hitters are now making him work a little bit, fouling off pitches, trying to get that pitch count up. Bonaboa is the second leading home run hitter on this Henderson Nevada team. But a good pitch by Bonvillian to get the strikeout. That's his second strikeout. There comes that changeup that he tried to throw to the last hitter and walked him, but this was a really, really good changeup down and away and he got him out front. Two down now and Nelson on at first. The batter will be Garrett Giles. He's walked and popped up to first base. Despite giving up that walk, Bonvillian looks pretty confident. He looks very confident, you know, throwing that fast ball and being aggressive in the zone. You saw on the screen, Giles still looking for his first hit in this World Series. Pop that up. First baseman Orinder called off it by Seth Tucker. Third out of the inning. Well, we're actually starting to get a little late in this game. Remember, we're only playing seven. Nevada leads Arkansas two to one. Tonight at 11 on ESPN, be sure to tune in to Sports Center at night with Neil Everett and Nicole Briscoe. They'll have all the best from the major leagues, NFL news, and everything else. Sports Center at night, also streaming live on the ESPN app. It's tonight at 11 Eastern. We saw a shot there of uh, some of the cooking going on. Great hamburgers, hot dogs here. They also have a local delicacy called liver munch. <laughs> I at least tried it. Steve Woodard is not going to try. Not so much. <laughs> it was really interesting. Uh, there they are. 
These guys do a great job. Watching the outfielders loosen up before the inning. Normally they're out in their positions doing it, but they were really close to the infield to try to stay in some dry grass. That is going to be a fair ball. Scott Schmidt, the third baseman, leads off with a double. That was just inside the line. It looked like it hit right on the line and just took off toward the fence there in foul territory and went right with the pitch. Right inside that line. Now the number nine hitter, Kobe Griner, who grounded out to shortstop the last time up. And you would think the bunt would be in order with the tying run down at second base. And he's squared around and better believe he's probably squaring around again. Only play is at first. And Reiner, who doesn't have a hit here in Shelby, does his job with the sacrifice bunt, and Schmidt goes to third. My great job of bunting, but it's right where you're supposed to, to third base, making the third baseman come up and field that ball, and opening up third base to get that runner in scoring position. And now we move to the top of the order. Pretty hot hitter in Logan Allen. Allen doubled in had scored the only run today for Arkansas in the third inning. The right field with one out, the runner is going to tag and will score the tying run. Sacrifice fly, Logan Allen. Great job of hitting. Griner got him to third on the bunt. Logan Allen drove him in with a sack fly. Textbooks, that's what they've been doing all year. The small ball. It, Arkansas has lived by that, and that's how they earned their way here to the World Series. Can't do it any better than that. So two outs now. The batter is the shortstop, Jake East. To right field. Long run, but John Howard Bobo makes the catch. However, Arkansas comes up with the tying run. Here in the bottom of the fifth, we go to the sixth. We're all tied. Nevada two, Arkansas two. ESPNU presents the summer of next. Brought to you by Geico. We're at the American Legion World Series. Shelby, North Carolina. Mike Hawkwood with you along with Steve Woodard. It's been a great event all week long and this is another great game we got going tied at two as we head to the six and we'll repeat it again we are only playing seven innings JJ Smith will lead it off Smith has laid down a sacrifice bunt flown out to left as you see only one hit here in the fourth game that they've played That hit came in the very first game against Nebraska, a game they lost 9-1. to one. And Mike, this Arkansas team, they look completely different in that first day when they came out the last several games. Well, they lost to Idaho 4 nothing, and then you thought, well, okay, they'll not make it to the semifinals. They, we, didn't know, we didn't know the heart of this Arkansas team and how long. You know, obviously playing together and being such close friends since the time they were really young kids means something. It does. And, you know, they've came back. They've moved runners over, got them in. They hit three home runs the other day. Just playing some good baseball. And give that guy a lot of credit, Darren Hurt. He's had a couple of sons come through this program. His youngest son's the catcher on this team as Smith. And the center fielder, Logan Allen, makes the play. Yeah, and his other son, Ozzy's coaching uh, third base for him. Family affair. That's Ozzy right beside him. David Huddleston, the second baseman, will be the batter. He's 0 for 2. Got a couple of hits in the World Series. He grounded out to second base, and he's flown out to center field.
and he might have got one there that looked a little up, but uh, when you're around the zone, the umpire's going to give it to you. And Mark Mail, our umpire behind the plate. Most of these umpires are college umpires, and they are all here because they've had great summers and great seasons. And it was fun getting a chance to sit down and eat dinner with them the other night at the Kelly Pickler concert. And yeah, there's so many great events that go on with this American Legion. The, the Kelly Pickler concert was uh, downtown. Base hit by Huddleston. And I'm not surprised that Steve Woodard, a pitcher, would seek out the umpires and <laughs> have dinner with them. you got to make them your best friend, exactly. Mike. Exactly. Well, you're right. That is some mustache on <laughs> William. Nick Thompson, the center fielder of the batter. Remember, he was warming up the pitch down in the bullpen. Should he be needed? He's 0 for 2. He's grounded out to short and struck out. Does not have a hit here in Shelby. He sure does look comfortable. He's getting ahead. He's ahead 0-2 here again. And see him make a quality pitch here. Try to get him to chase up and away with that fastball. And let's see if he don't come back with that good changeup he's been throwing all day. On Villian had retired four in a row before he gave up that base hit. The Huddleston. Just the second hit he's given up. Thompson struck out, and then they got it, and they threw him out. Nice play by Seth Tucker, the second baseman, to get David Huddleston. And nothing doing for Nevada here at the top of the inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. All tied at two. That's a nice play. The American Legion World Series is part of the summer of next, is brought to you by Cleveland County Tourism. And by GEICO, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Dr. Scholl's Pain Relieving Orthotics. Now I discovered that Benjamin Cleveland and Isaac Shelby were the leaders of the Revolutionary Troops in the Battle of Kings Mountain just down the road in the Revolutionary War, a big battle that uh, was a, a key in that war and that's a long hit and a great catch in center field by Nick Thompson. Seth Tucker gave it a ride and Thompson ran a long way to make that catch. He did and that water didn't slow him down there going for that ball. What a great catch. He went a long ways to get that ball. Dylan Hurd is the batter son of the coach and he rips a base hit. We're in the bottom of the sixth and remember we just play seven so this would be a big run. If Arkansas could get it. And he is so fun to watch play like you said probably the MVP of this team here just driving that ball in the gap and Starting catcher a year ago at uh, Arkansas Fort Smith. And a slow walk out to the mound by Scott Baker. And he's going to make the call to the bullpen. With the go ahead run, Dylan Hurd on at first, bottom of the sixth inning. Pitching change here in Shelby. We'll be back with more in a moment. Christian Sanford pitched well. His day is done. And as we told you, the center fielder who had been warming up, Nick Thompson, is in now to pitch for Nevada. There are the numbers on Sanford. And Sanford, he did, he did a great job out there today, keeping his team in the game here, get them late in the game. And now Nick Thompson comes in. And Nick on the year was 4-0 with one save, but he had a 1.12 ERA. Now, you know, he ran to the dugout and changed gloves. 
I, I don't know. There's a difference between a, the glove you use in center field and the glove you use pitching. Well, in center field, you want to have the biggest glove as you can get and find anywhere. And pitching, he probably went to a smaller glove that's a little bit lighter. Ryan Nelson, the designated hitter, has gone to center field. So the batting order will stay the same. And Thompson, the regular season, pretty, pretty good. And you saw Nelson is just now running out to center field. <laughs> So he moves from the DH spot to center, and the center fielder Thompson comes in to pitch. And he looks like he can run, get it out there, too. Tied at two, but the go ahead run is on at first base. Alex Shirtliff is the batter. He has flown out to center field and walked. Winner. Plays in the championship game tomorrow night here in the American Legion World Series. Man, we've seen some catches with some good arms, throwing behind runners, and made that pretty close right there. And Roger Riley has shown an arm here today. Hit the inside corner. Strike one to Shirtliff. Nevada led this game 2-0, Arkansas. Got one in the bottom of the third. Got one in the fifth. And they'd love to get one here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hurd, and you talked about this, he does not have typical catcher speed. We saw him go from first to third last night on a ball that got by the first baseman. Shirt lift up the middle, base hit. Here we go. And that'll put the go ahead run in scoring position. Two hits in a row. And another great job of hitting, just driving this ball back up the middle. And line drive, base hit to center field. I have really been impressed with the resiliency of this Arkansas team. They do not give up, do they? No, sir. And those camo jerseys that <laughs> they thought they were only going to wear one day have brought them some luck. Jake Wright, the designated hitter, is the batter. And remember, he hit one of those home runs against New Jersey a couple of days ago. He tried to do it right there also. Struck out and flown out to center field so far in this game. And Thompson there just showed us a breaking ball there, slider away. It's one of the first ones he's thrown. You see that throw from Roger Riley from his knees through a bullet to second base. And made it a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. up will it stay in play looks like it will Riley makes the play and they're two down so it'll be up to Aaron Orinder unless we have a pinch hitter which I think we're gonna get here Pinch hitter is going to be Brandon Hoover. Hoover's going to hit for Orinder. Hoover has three hits. He did not play last night against North Carolina. Two for two against Idaho. One for four against New Jersey. Hoover, the pinch hitter. And 
He took a hefty cut at it. Big guy. He'll probably play first base in the seventh. He's a rising senior in high school. Just a bit outside there and good job of holding up. And you got to wonder, Mike, it looks like it's starting to maybe drizzle a little rain out here. Maybe it has effect on the pitcher a little bit, gripping the ball. Darren Hurts says Brandon Hoover always gives him great effort. And that is a good pitch curveball across for a strike. One and two. Thompson trying to get out of the inning. Arkansas trying to score the go ahead run. Good pitch. He was just barely held on there, hitting it right off the end of the bat. That is a foul ball. That was close. Tita was. Hoover was out in front of it. Very close on a curveball. Got out in front of it just a little bit, and you can see him laughing. He was wanting that. Third base umpire, John Johnson. Popped it up, and the new center fielder, Ryan Nelson, makes the catch. Arkansas strands two. We head to the seventh and potentially the final inning, but we're tied 2-2. Two -two. Bo Bonvillian, our summer of next player. He struck out two. He's done a good job in relief of Myers Buck. Man, he's came in and did exactly what Arkansas needed. He's kept him in the game, thrown strikes, and man, he looks better and better as the game goes on. He's our Geico who's next player. Bo Bonvillian, and there his line, not bad. Not bad at all, three and two thirds innings pitch, two hits, no runs, one walk, and three strikeouts. And you, you mentioned the rain, it is starting to come down, you can see it there. It has been in the forecast all day today. Let's just hope we can get this game finished. And those guys got an umbrella there, I didn't think we could bring umbrellas in this park. Turn around. <laughs> look behind. Look, seriously, look behind. I you. see it. Yeah. Okay. It's my umbrella. <laughs> I can get us in case we need it, okay? I got it. All tied at two here in the seventh. Top of the order, John Howard Bobo will lead it off. And you can see now that rain's coming down pretty good. Now we got to worry a little bit about. The game tonight, Nebraska and North Carolina. And remember, this, this outfield is already saturated. We documented that. It's not going to be able to take much more. Hopefully, this rain will hold off. I know one thing. Those outfielders can't wait to get some dry clothes on. <laughs> this game <laughs> some, is over. Some dry socks. But you're right. John Howard Bobo on the nose. And a good run by Logan Allen through that wet infield. Now, we had to bring a helicopter in here earlier today to try to even make this outfield playable. That's a local doctor. He not only owns the helicopter, he flies it himself. And he came out here, and we appreciate what he did to come here and try to help dry off this field. And if I'm not mistaken, donated his time. Indeed, and yeah. Well, that's just been the spirit of Cleveland County for this American Legion. They do what needs to be done. They, and this is a year-long project. I mean, they work on this all year long to make this week, whether there's rain or whatever it is, a great experience. And it has been a great experience here celebrating not only some great baseball, but what the American Legion does to support uh, men and women who have served our country and are serving our country now. 
And we wouldn't be here today, Mike, if it wasn't for those guys that served in the military and are serving now. Roger Riley, the batter. To Tucker, the second baseman, two down. And one thing here, Mike, the pitcher, you know, when it's raining like this right here and you got your glove, the ball, if you hold the glove open, the ball rains going right down on the ball and it makes it slick. So it, it, when you pitch, you've pitched in rain, I'm sure, a number of times. It, yeah, numerous times, but you've you got to turn your glove over to where rain can get directly onto that ball. And that's what he has done. Ryan Nelson, now the center fielder, is the batter. Well, you can see why we made him our summer of next player, Bo Bonvillian. He has done a whale of a job on the mound. strike and he's ahead a ball and two strikes to Nelson you know and we're talking about those pitch count rules and stuff like that he's a pitch 76 but throw all that out the window and there's a base hit by Nelson to right field that's his second hit today he has scored one of the two runs for Nevada <laughs> Again, we'll document when you get a runner on and Jack Thomas Wold comes to the plate. You're playing with fire. And not mistaken, he's hit two hard balls to left field today and just missed him. Flown to your right, flown to the left twice, and he's got a base hit. And a big opportunity here for Nevada. How about Bonvillian quickly ahead, 0-2. There was that changeup we've been watching him throw all day and just got him out front. Lift to center field. Allen is going back. And he'll make the catch for the third out of the inning. Arkansas needs a run here in the bottom of the seventh to win it. It's raining and it's getting late. And we are tied 2-2. There's the team from Randolph County, the North Carolina representative. They're supposed to play at 7.30 against Nebraska. But right now it is raining, and it is really raining pretty hard as we move to the bottom of the seventh inning. For Arkansas, it'll be the eighth and nine spots to lead it off. Scott Schmidt, then Kobe Griner. Facing Nick Thompson, who's come in from center field to relieve Christian Sanford. Schmidt had a double his last time up. And you got to give Thompson credit. He's came into this game from center field to the pitcher's mound and throwing strikes. And look how hard it's raining. You wonder if nobody scores, if Arkansas is not able to score, if they might stop this game as we would get ready to head to extra innings. Ground ball to second base. Huddleston handles it easily, one out. Now if you got an umbrella, put it up. Kobe Griner. At the plate, he does not have a hit in this, the fourth game Arkansas has played here in Shelby. But has done all the little things to help his team win. And has made some nice catches. Through the summer, he hit 235. Nick Thompson ahead, a ball and two strikes. Board for Arkansas. And what a great time to get your first hit of the series. Absolutely. 
clutch hit here in the bottom of the seventh. And he drove that ball right back up the middle. And they got a runner on. And they've got a hot hitter coming up in Logan Allen. Allen had a sacrifice fly his last time up, but he's got a double in this game, and he scored one of the two Arkansas runs. What a chance he has here. Greiner's got decent speed. Would you send him to try to get him in scoring position? You could possibly do a hit and run right here. It's a 1-0 count. Maybe if it goes 2-0, 2-1, get him in motion, let the hitter hit. I don't know if I'd directly steal unless he's stolen a lot of bases this year. Kobe Griner, rising junior in high school, represents the winning run at first base. Allen way out of front of it. Allen was the freshman of the year in the conference that uh, Arkansas Fort Smith plays in, a Division II school. The Heartland Conference. That was a great stop by Roger Riley, the Nevada catcher. Ball hit the dirt, was uh, two feet outside. Saved him from being in scoring position and being on second base. Ground ball, it's going to get through. Winning run is down at second base with one out. And a big base hit for Logan Allen. And these guys just don't give up, do they? Well, they battle. They, they play with a lot of heart. They've known each other for a long time. Again, they played together, this group, since Little League days. And now you got to wonder, Mike, if the, the outfield don't move in just a little bit because the ball hit on the ground is going to be slow. Well, the center fielder, Ryan Nelson, has come in. Arkansas two for four as a team with runners in scoring position today. And right now would be a great time to make it three for five. And now that rain and the, the mud on the mound, you could tell that that was bothering Nick Thompson just a little bit. It's two and oh and yeah. And if Nick, you know, if Nick right here, if he's slipping, he needs to just tell the umpire, tell the coach, let him stop, let him work on the mound and fix it. Now with him having these issues, do you take a strike here? I would be taken. It's 3-0. and oh, And Walk will load the bases and put the winning run at third. Now I'm for sure taken. <laughs> Winning run will move to third base. Griner down to third, Allen to second, and Jake East is on at first. There's one out. So a fly ball, you've got to bring the outfield in a little bit here. You've got to bring the outfield in. Because a deep fly ball is going to win the game. Absolutely, and you've got to bring the infield in. And let's see how Coach Baker, I'm sure Coach Baker will go out and maybe talk to him here and try to work out a, a defensive placement here. Well, he's got this veteran catcher in Roger Riley. And he really is the captain of this defense. And you've got the two guys you want coming up right now. Seth Tucker coming up. Three and four in the order. Seth Tucker and behind him Dylan Hurt. Two big bats. Tucker's got a hit today. And if you look at the defensive placement right now, the, the middle infielders are playing middle back and trying to maybe turn two. Outside Thompson. Now five straight balls. He's having trouble finding the plate. That mound is really bothering him. Yeah. And obviously a walk beats the ball game. Right. And uh, coach is going out to talk to him and just try to relax him a little bit here and get him to calm down. Right here in this situation, Mike, you wonder, you know, he's throwing five balls in a row. Are you going to take or are you going to let him swing? 
Tucker had a hit in the first inning, a single. Then he bunted for a base hit in the third, and he's flown out to center field. And you can never, hey, never count out a safety squeeze. They've done it already in this turn. You're going to do whatever you got to do to get that run home from third. That run home comes home. Absolutely. You're playing for a championship yes. tomorrow night. Yes, you are. There's one out. Base is loaded. Seth Tucker. Ground ball, that is a foul ball. And I will say my theory has not let us down yet. Your theory is <laughs> coach comes out to talk, a strike follows. And that's what happened. The counts a ball and a strike. And ball him as hit grinder. Another ground ball foul, and they're now two strikes. You could turn a double play now, and we're going extra innings. Absolutely, and you know, he's got a battle here up at the plate to just try to put this ball in play somewhere. This is not a wet infield. Infield is in. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good pitch by Nick Thompson in a really pressure situation. Wow, he came through there with a great breaking ball down and away. And what a great job of blocking this ball to keep it in front of you. And only fitting with two outs and the bases loaded. And the guy who has played the best for this team all week, Dylan Hurd, is at the plate. Our team MVP here. And <laughs> eight situations right here for him to take, isn't it? He's one for three. He's flown out to the left, flown out to center, and had a base hit his last time up. Base hit here wins the game. Hurt. Short stop, second base. We got bonus baseball. Arkansas has the bases loaded, but Nevada gets out of it. And we're going extra innings, folks. We're all tied. Nevada 2, Arkansas 2. What a great job by Nevada pitcher Nick Thompson as Arkansas had the bases loaded and one out. The bottom of the seventh. We're going to extra innings now with our score tied at two, and you can see it is still raining really hard here. Bo Bonvillian stays on. He'll continue to pitch for Arkansas. For Nevada, it will be Jesse Fonaboa, Garrett Giles, and J.J. Smith do up. There's some dedicated fans here at this American Legion World Series. And they're watching a great ball game. It is a great game. And it looked like Nevada, they got their uh, rally sunglasses on there in the dugout. If you saw those, they were lighting up. It was kind of cool. Look at those sunglasses there on uh, Eric Cruz. He lighten up. <laughs> Wonder where we can get us a pair of those. You'd look good in them, that's <laughs> for sure. Two balls and a strike. Jesse Fonaboa is the batter here in the eighth inning. And this is just, you know, first time he's really been behind all day. 3-1 here. Fonaboa today has flown out to center, reached on an error, and struck out. Jake East Fields throws in time. Great play. You know, they as soon as they get that ball, they got to get a feel for it. You know, it's wet with that ground wet like that when they get it. And that was really smart by East. Get the field the ball, realize you got time, and that ball's wet. Make sure you got it. Garrett Giles, the shortstop. He's walked and popped up to the first baseman twice. And there he comes right back, getting ahead of this hitter here. Still looking for his first hit in this American Legion World Series. A 
lot of room. Hoover's going over, and that's going to be out of play. Barely hit the edge of that dugout. Ball on two strikes to count to Garrett Giles. There's one out. We're in extra innings. And there was that great change up again, down and away. And what a great job by Dylan Hurd, blocking that ball and throwing him out at first. That's the fourth strikeout for Bonvillian. So it's coming on in relief of Myers Buck. Wonder how long it took him to grow that mustache. I got to ask him that. I don't know, but it is impressive. It is very. J.J. Smith, the left fielder, with two outs. And Bonvillian is still throwing strikes. Smith doesn't have a hit today. Did have a sacrifice bunt in the second inning. And that's going to get in for his first hit. Wow, he just showed his speed off and he rounded first there, thinking two right out of the box. And he got about halfway to second base nearly and turned around and came back. Watch how this ball just dies in center field with this wet outfield. And I think that's what he was thinking, man. This ball's going to die. And he comes around first, and you can see him just busting it. And he stops. Boom. Back. Well, he represents the go-ahead run. And Darren Hurts going to come out of the dugout to talk to Bo Bonvillian. And you wonder how long Bonvillian's went this year. You know, how deep is he, how many pitches has he thrown in a game? How deep has he went? Still throwing strikes. There are two outs. And you know if he went out there and asked him how he is, you know exactly what he's going to tell him. I'm I fine. I'm fine. I want this game. That uniform now soaked. <laughs> to right field. And my theory works again. Threw a strike after he came out. Shirtliff makes the catch. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Arkansas scores a run. They'll win it. Yeah, the rally monkey's out for Arkansas as they try to get the winning run across here in the bottom of the eighth. I've seen teams do all kinds of things. Baseball is a sport full of superstition. A lot of superstitions. You do anything to score a run, and uh, look at that rally monkey. Alex Shirtlift, the right fielder, will lead it off. And you can see the rain still coming out at a pretty good clip. Next game is supposed to start at 7.30. I would say that that start time might be in question. Ball and a strike to Shirtliff. In the bottom of the seventh, Arkansas had the bases loaded and only one out. Not able to get the winning run home. And you got to give Thompson credit for making some great pitches in that last inning, striking out a guy to make two outs, and then getting a ground ball. Well, that ball's going to eat up the third baseman, Jesse Fontaboa. And again, the winning run, or the potential winning run, is on at first base. You know, and it looks like Jesse sat back on this ball and was, uh, and this ball kind of played him and took a. Took a bad hop right there at the last second. Well, it's wet. The grass is wet. The infield is wet. That's the second error for the Nevada defense. Logan Chambers is going to pinch hit here. 
for Jake Wright. He's a left-handed batter. So playing the percentages, only 16 years old. You know, and he's probably like we maybe put him in to, to get a bunt down here, a situational guy. Got to get that guy to second base. Boy, he missed the bunt. One and one. Did not look comfortable squaring around the bunt. No, he kind of jumped at that one a little bit and didn't let it come to him. There he gets the bunt down. It's a good one. Well, he comes in, pitch hits, does his job. Great job. And they're going to be up at the top of that dugout right there, giving him a high five and getting that runner in the scoring position. And when they put Hoover in as a pinch hitter in the last inning, he had a chance. He's got another chance right here. Now with Shirtliff down at second base. Brandon Hoover, who came in as a pinch hitter and flew out to center field. And he wanted it right there. He jumped right on it. He wanted to end it right there, didn't he? Indeed. The potential winning run is down at second base and Alex Shurtleff. The center field, the inner field was in and a good play by John Howard Bobo, but Shurtleff is going to get to third base. Great job of tagging up, getting to third base. Now, hey, anything can happen. Pass ball, wild pitch. He's going to score. Scott Schmidt is the batter. Does have a hit today, doubled in the fifth inning. He's grounded out twice. Thompson going to that rosin bag to try to keep his hand dry. Anything to keep that ball dry. 1 0 to center field. Coming in. And a great catch by the second baseman, David Huddleston. Wow, what a great catch. And hopefully nobody's hurt there. Ryan Nelson came in hard. That was the third out of the inning. You don't make that catch, you lose the game. What a great defensive play. We go to the ninth, all tied at two. Well, that young man, David Huddleston, just saved the game for Nevada with a great catch to end the inning. Yeah, that was, that was a great catch. And you know, it was uh, got to communicate right there. There was nearly a disaster right there getting somebody hurt, but a great catch. You don't make that play, you're headed home. New pitcher is Boston Heil, who is the closer for this team. Yeah, and Boston's going to throw a fastball, a slider, and a changeup. And Boston's going to throw that ball from sidearm, from down low. And, uh, you know, he's going to be somewhere between 75 to 80 miles an hour. Had a great summer. Doesn't throw hard, but all his pitches move a lot. He didn't even start the season as the closer, but... As they look for one as the season progresses, he got the job done. So Heil now pitching, and he's facing Nick Thompson, the pitcher. And Thompson, base hit, go ahead run is on at first. He's going to try to make it to second, and he is in there. Mike, Great that's base a, running, huh? Boy, that's awesome, right out of the box, busting it. Trying to make that center field make a great throw to second base. It had to be a perfect throw to get him. And he's in there with a double. And he represents the go-ahead run. And you better believe they're going to try to figure out a way to get him to third base. The batter is the top of the order of John Howard Bobo. So Heil comes in and 
gives up a double to Nick Thompson representing the go ahead run. That is the 10th hit of the game for Nevada. They've out hit Arkansas 10 to 9. You know Mike the one thing I mean him running out of the box like that making something happen just like J.J. Smith did in the last inning trying to make that hard turn around first. You make the defense uh, get a little nervous when you do things like that. You got to think that uh, John Howard Bobo is going to bunt here just to try to get Thompson over the third. Exactly what he's doing and hurt almost yeah. caught that. That was close right there. He tried to make a diving catch. Well, that would have been something. <laughs> Just missed it. Great effort. You know what I like about John Howard Bobo? You know he's going to bunt. So he goes ahead and squares around early and gets that bat out front. You know, he's giving himself up. All he's wanting to do is just get that guy to third. Well, I think a lot of times now, guys, they take for granted that bunt and, you know, rather get, just get it down. You're giving yourself up. Get it out. You're going to make it out. Now Heil falls behind three and one. What matters is that run at second. They'd like to get more, but you want to put the pressure on Arkansas headed to the bottom of the inning. Does his job. He did his job. That was a great bunt. Making the third baseman field it. And you got that guy in scoring position at third base now. With less than two outs. So now let's see if they can get him in. Fly ball gets him in. Pass ball gets him in. And obviously, base hit gets him in. Roger Riley is the batter. Riley is two for four today. He's had a good day. But I want to say that they may be two for nine, maybe with runners in scoring position today. So let's see if they can break that. Takes a strike. And Arkansas, they got to bring the infield in. They can't let them score here. Just missed. He's making his great pitch. First one was more on the plate. That was just a bit off trying to get him to chase. Those two hits Riley's had today are the first two he's had in the tournament. That's lined in the center field base hit. And Nevada's going to take the lead three to two. Clutch hit by Roger Riley, the catcher. Thompson scores and that'll score that'll score them every time won't it but uh, just a great job of hitting and just dropping this ball in the gap there to, to get this guy in from third base. Well Heil has come in and fooled anybody he's given up two hits. Now let's see now if Scott Baker don't get him going right here first. Woody, these three runs today equal the total of the three previous games. For the whole tournament, three games, and you wonder if their bats have woke up. Ohio has had a tough time here coming in in relief. It's his game. There's nobody in the bullpen. 2-0. And it's 3-0, and you got to believe he's going to be taken right here. And you know, when you're the closer, you're in there a lot of times. You're in there for whatever happens. And look who's on deck: Jack Thomas Wold, the guy you don't want to come up. He's hit the ball hard three times today, four times today.
There goes the runner. Throws a little offline. He may go to third. Now another runner at third base with less than two outs. You know, got a great jump there at first, uh, you know, off the pitcher. And, you know, that errant throw going back into the runner and gets away, goes into center field. Now he's at third base with less than two outs. Nevada's offense came to life here in the semifinals. That great pitch right there to get him out. Now you got to wonder. What is Coach Hurt going to do? Is he going to put him on on first base, or is he going to pitch to him? I'm not sure I'd pitch to him. Yeah, they're going to put him on. And, uh, and I'll tell you this, Jack Thompson Wolf's upset about it. He I wanted to he hit. He did, did he? I don't know if I'd want to throw to him. Yeah, and it'll be now Jose Fontaboa, who does not have a hit today. Yeah, Jack Thompson Bold, he, he's put it to the outfield every time. You know, it's uh, it's going to be another run. It's a lot of respect right there. This run, I think, at third base is really big. 3-2, you're Arkansas. You come in, you're feeling okay. 4-2, that's a big hill to climb. Yeah, it is. You know, and two runs scored, two runs there in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the ninth. It's going to be tough. Ball, two strikes to count to the Nevada third baseman, Jesse Fontaboa. You know, and I've seen Nevada already in this tournament run a play where they get the runner going and stop halfway to second. They you know, did. They're going to let uh, Wold go down to second base. Yeah, and they tried to do a delayed steal right there. And I thought he was going to stop about halfway between first and second and try to make them do something. I've seen that happen, and I've seen that work. Ground ball is going to get through. Another run will score. Wold will be held at third. It is four to two. Clutch hitting here in the top of the ninth by this team from Henderson, Nevada. And their, their bats have came alive and scoring some runs now. Stay back and hit this ball to left field. Just uh, put it on the ground between the hole and base hit. 12 hits today for Nevada. That's the most in this World Series by a long shot. Garrett Giles is the batter. Well, this inning has been a nightmare for Look at the hats on. <laughs> Look at the rally caps here. Hats stacked up with the sunglasses. That's nice work. East backhands it, long throw. It's not going to get there. Run will score. And now they're claiming interference on the part of Hoover. Or if the ball went into the dugout, I'm not sure where the ball went, but watch this collision going down the line. Great play right here by Jakey in the hole. There was a collision there. And looks like the ball disappeared maybe right here and went into the dugout possibly. Boy, three runs now in in the inning. And J.J. Smith's the batter. And they intentionally, they're going to intentionally put J.J. Uh, Smith on at first and to load him up and make an easy force out somewhere. This is the ninth batter of the inning. Nevada is batted around. And they're starting to smell a shot in the championship game tomorrow night. David Huddleston is the batter. Three runs in in the ninth inning. That ball goes, I don't think they're making a play. They're not. Another run scores. Two runs are in. Got him at third, but boy, this has been a disastrous inning for Arkansas. And a great inning for Nevada. They come up with five runs in the top of the ninth. 
We go to the bottom of the ninth, Nevada leading Arkansas, seven to two. Well, we head to the bottom of the ninth with the score seven to two, a big, big uh, job now for Arkansas. They've got to come up somehow with five runs to keep this game alive. Yeah, the Three errors yes. did in Arkansas. The fat lady hasn't sung yet, but she's getting close. She's warming up, she that's is. for sure. Yep. And you know, that's a dejected dugout. And you know, we still got Nick Thompson out. You know, he's came in and did a great job of keeping you know, keeping these Arkansas guys down. It'll be the nine spot, Kobe Griner, who did have a base hit his last time up. Logan Allen and Jake East here in the ninth for Arkansas. Mike, it's been a whirlwind of a game. Both teams, Arkansas had runners in scoring position. Nevada's had runners in scoring position. The game was scheduled for seven innings, and we were tied at two. Five runs in the ninth for Nevada. And a team that came to the semifinals with a losing record of one and two. They had only scored three runs total in the previous three games, one in each. But it's a team that hit over 400 as a team throughout the summer. Throw was high. But a good job by Wold to bring it down, and they're two outs away. And a great job by Nick Thompson of, you know, getting that first guy out of the inning, especially when you put five runs up on the board. You want to put up a zero right here and end this game. Mike, you know you're going to Arkansas is going to look back and look back at that seventh inning. I think it was the seventh when they had bases loaded with less than two outs. Well, they had bases loaded and one out. You're right. Turned on it by Allen. That's going to be a home run. Fourth home run here in Shelby. It's the second by Allen. He hit that ball a long ways. But he doesn't have a smile on his face. No, but uh, you know, great job of hitting right here. And uh, he knew it was going when he hit it. You know, and he's saying, where was that in the sixth inning? Where was that in the seventh inning? And that's all it would have took was a fly ball to end that game. Ball to short. Down makes the play. Two down. Arkansas is down to their final out. You know, if you're Nick Thompson, you're not worried about home runs right now. You just want to throw strikes and you don't care about leaving that ball out over the plate. Well, no, let them hit it. I mean, a home run's not going to hurt you. You know, you want to make them swing it. Thompson, he's done a great job in relief of Christian Sanford. Both guys, both guys have thrown the ball extremely well. Ball and two strikes. Nevada needs one out. Will that stay in? Wold can't make the play. Whoa. 
And the second baseman goes flying over the hopefully he's okay. Hard to David Huddleston. Wow. I don't think he could stop. He tried to jump and dang. Oh. That's quite a leap. Right onto his back. And you know that don't feel good. No, he couldn't stop. Give Arkansas some credit. This team fought hard after losing their first game. They took this game to extra innings, and it just was a great effort by Nevada. This might do it. Throw to first in time, and the Legion team from Henderson, Nevada, is in the championship game here in Shelby tomorrow night. They win it 7 to 3. Let's give them some credit. They had not hit the ball a lick coming into this semifinal game. They haven't, and they did today. They come out and they scored runs, and uh, I guess they're ready to play tomorrow night. They are. We've got one more game to go here North Carolina and Nebraska. That game is still scheduled for 7 30 tonight, and we'll have it right here on ESPNU. Who will play Nevada tomorrow, North Carolina or Nebraska? Wow, what a game, huh? That was a great game. I'm looking forward to a great game coming up. And we will see you at 7.30 tonight, Nebraska and North Carolina. So for now, for Steve Woodard and our entire ESPN crew, Mike Hogwood here saying so long for now. We'll see you at 7.30 here in Shelby, North Carolina.